Hi, my name is Atif Kamal. This is another workshop on logic and reasoning. This one is on converting conjunctive syllogisms to conditional or disjunctive syllogisms. If you have any questions or comments, you can relay them to me via Skype. My Skype username is atif.kamal, or you can also relay them to me via email. My email address is projectoptimization at gmail.com. Now, I have one reason each for why you would want to convert a conjunctive syllogism to either a conditional or disjunctive syllogism. For a conditional syllogism, um, it's more obvious in a conditional syllogism that if one choice or if one possibility occurs, then the other remaining possibility will not occur. Um, because that's basically what's happening in a conjunctive syllogism. You are confirming one possibility in the second premise and on the basis of confirming that possibility you are eliminating your remaining possibility okay so I think a conditional proposition removes uh, the ambiguity that I think is present in a uh, conjunctive proposition concerning um, whether one or both possibilities will not occur which I will uh, make more clear when I go over um, a conjunctive syllogism in terms of uh, the benefit of converting a conjunctive syllogism to a disjunctive syllogism, um, I think generally we implicitly interpret that a um, disjunctive syllogism, um, in a disjunctive syllogism, only one option, only one possibility or another will occur. So again, I think it's, uh, <coughs> I think that's more obvious in a disjunctive syllogism than. Um, a conjunct syllogism, and I will demonstrate that right now. Okay, so just looking at the first premise when it says you will not both purchase a mortgage and pay off your loans, there are basically at least two ways to interpret that. The first way would be that only one of those possibilities, purchasing a mortgage or paying off your loans, will occur, but the second way to interpret them by saying you will not both is that neither of those possibilities could occur. Um, those are very different because the first says that one of them will occur but the second interpretation says that none of them will occur. So I think converting to a conditional um, or disjunctive syllogism makes that interpretation uh, less likely. Alright, so I'm going to go into this conjunctive syllogism now. Uh, the first premise is you will not both purchase a mortgage and pay off your loans. The second premise is you will purchase a mortgage. And so confirming that possibility in the second premise is supposed to deny the other possibility that remains in the conclusion. We're denying the possibility that you will pay off your loans. Okay, we're saying you will not pay off your loans. Now let's say instead that in the second premise we confirm that you will pay off your loans that's supposed to eliminate the possibility that you will purchase a mortgage. We are eliminating the possibility. Now we're saying that you will not purchase a mortgage in the, in the conclusion, in this case. Okay, now if we want to convert this to a conditional syllogism, this is what it'll look like. Alright, so premise one, if you purchase a mortgage, you will not pay off your loans. So purchasing a mortgage is supposed to cause you to not pay off your loans. In the second premise, we confirm that you will purchase a mortgage. So then that means in the conclusion that you will not pay off your loans. Or let's say that we know that um, you will not, oh no, you will pay off your loans. Okay. Now from that, we can infer that the antecedent, the cause, has not occurred, that you will purchase, that you purchase the mortgage. So that means that in the conclusion, you will not purchase a mortgage. Okay, so basically, if you negate the consequent in the first premise, um, then you're going to negate um, the antecedent. So if you say instead of you will not, that you will pay off your loans, then instead of you will purchase, you will not purchase a mortgage. Okay. Now, if you want to convert the conjunctive syllogism to a disjunctive syllogism, this is what it will look like. Now before I get into this, I have to make a clarification about an assumption you have to make when converting a conjunctive syllogism to a disjunctive syllogism. And it is that um, 
you have to assume that in the second premise if you're going to confirm one possibility then that means the other must be eliminated we're assuming that um, it isn't possible for both um, possibilities or disjuncts to be confirmed um, that one of them has to be confirmed and one of them has to be eliminated okay now in the first premise you have either you will purchase a mortgage or you'll pay off your loans in premise two we figure out that you will purchase a mortgage so then we're supposed to eliminate the possibility that you'll pay off your loans okay or let's say in the second premise that you figure out that you will pay off your loans that's supposed to eliminate the possibility that you will purchase a mortgage okay and again I just want to emphasize that um, we're making the assumption that um, one possibility will be confirmed and the remaining possibility will be denied okay now here is an example for you to do on your own you want to convert this to each a conditional syllogism and a disjunctive syllogism and just like I did in the previous examples you want to um, in the first case you want to confirm one of the possibilities in the second case you want to confirm the other possibility okay and then find out the conclusion in both cases okay so I'll give you a moment to work on that if you need more time you can pause the video otherwise I will move on to the answers okay so first um, the conjunctive syllogism that we have here is in premise one you will not both eat dinner at home and eat at a restaurant with your friend now we confirm in the second premise that you will eat dinner at home okay so that's supposed to mean that you're not going to eat dinner or you're not going to eat at a restaurant with your friend in the conclusion okay now let's say instead we find out in the second premise that you will eat at a restaurant with your friend so then that's supposed to eliminate the possibility that you will eat dinner at home you're not going to eat dinner at home okay now if we convert this to a conditional syllogism for the first premise we get if you eat dinner at home you will not eat at a restaurant with your friend so eating dinner at home is supposed to cause you to not eat at a restaurant with your friend okay so in the second premise we confirm that you will eat dinner at home and then the effect that's supposed to follow after that is that you will not eat at a restaurant with your friend so that's the conclusion for the second premise um, we will deny the consequence that is in the first premise so instead of saying that you will not eat we're saying you will eat at a restaurant with your friend and since that has occurred in the second premise then that means just like how the consequent was negated the antecedent must also be negated so that means the conclusion will be not that you will eat dinner at home but you will not eat dinner at home okay lastly if we convert the conjunctive syllogism to a disjunctive syllogism this is what we get and I want to emphasize for a third time that we're making the assumption that one possibility will be confirmed but the other must be denied okay now in premise one you have either you will eat dinner at home or eat at a restaurant with your friend we confirm in the second premise that you will eat dinner at home which means the conclusion you will not eat at a restaurant with your friend and if we change it the second premise you have you will eat dinner at a restaurant with your friend that means the conclusion you will not eat dinner at home okay now if you want more practice to do on your own uh, just as I have suggested in the past you can go to uh, Yahoo books at google.com uh, business week or alternet or any other sites like to go to to look up articles but there's something specific that I want you to look for and it is a list of either mutually exclusive actions choices or possibilities when I say mutually exclusive I mean they both cannot occur at the same time or they generally do not both occur at the same time only one or the other can occur and then after you've made your list from your list of uh, mutually exclusive choices options or actions or possibilities you will make conjunctive syllogisms after you make your conjunctive syllogisms you'll convert those to either or no you should do both to both uh, conditional and uh, disjunctive syllogisms if you want more practice that's what you can do 
Now, next up, I'm going to go over identifying assumptions uh, without using causal indicators. Uh, when I say assumptions, I'm referring um, specifically to categorical assumptions. And also that I, I should clarify that the next video will depend on a video that I've done in the past, which was on identifying cause and effect without causal indicators. Okay, so now I'm going to show you um, how not to rely on those causal indicators to identify assumptions. Okay, so that's what I'll do in the next video. And thank you.